Well, welcome back to Indy Now, friends. Since 1988, Genesaret Free Clinics has been providing healthcare access for vulnerable populations in Indiana. Their executive director, Teresa Patterson, joins us today to share more about how you can get involved with their important work. But before we get to the interview, let's take a look at this testimony from one of their clients. My name is Darren Davis. I do DoorDash now because of the pandemic. I was forced to find something to do and it was something that I'm qualified for. It doesn't take much qualification to be able to drive and have a license and be kind to people. It's not great income. It's, you know, you can scratch out a few hundred dollars a week, but then you also, you know, you got to pay your own gas, you got to pay your own taxes, you got to pay for your vehicle wear and tear and tires. And I had been feeling just lousy for quite some time, like maybe four or five, six months. And I went to Walmart one day and checked my blood pressure and it was super high and it said on the bottom of the screen, see pharmacist immediately. I went on home because I couldn't afford to go to the doctor and I thought uh, maybe the machine was bad. I would wait a week or so and check it again. Well, the very next week, a week to the day, I went back to another store, another Walmart, and it was actually a little higher. And I talked to that pharmacist. She kind of scared me. She said, you need to get to a doctor immediately. So I went out of my car and I got on my phone and I Googled cheap doctor because I knew I didn't have insurance. I was going to have to pay cash. And the second or third one on there said free clinic. And I thought, this can't be real. I came here and I left here with free medicine, um, blood pressure medicine, a vitamin and a water pill. Within a week, I felt the best I'd felt in years. It was just amazing. I didn't know this place existed until five or six months ago when I came, but it is, it's fantastic. I mean, there's so many people that are way worse off than me. I at least have a roof over my head. What do they do if they can't come to somewhere like this? In my case, I can't speak for everybody else, but in my case, I feel like they probably saved my life. And I really believe that. Wow, what an impactful story. That's, that's such, such a moving video, and Darren's testimony is just one of so many Hoosiers who GFC is helping Teresa. Tell us a little bit about um, the other services that you all provide. Yeah, so what a great look at our, our medical services. Genesaret also provides free dental care mm. for folks that need it. Um, we have a women's health services program, getting women in to do some screening, um, mammograms, um, clinical breast exams, and really trying to help identify women that are at high risk for uh, breast, and cervical, excuse me, breast and cervical cancer. Um, we operate health recovery homes mm. for individuals experiencing homelessness after hospitalization. The streets are a rough place to try and recover wow. yeah. after you've been in the hospital. And how many locations do you have around the city <clears throat> and how many people are you serving every year? We're serving thousands of people every year and, and the number just keeps going up. Um, we operate our free medical clinics in partner organizations. So we're in food pantries, we're in community centers and churches, and we really try to be where our, our um, um, we know where the need is and yeah. where our, our patients and our clients are. And I can only imagine that 2020 impacted your, the way that you do your mission so much and now we're kind of coming out of that. What are some of the needs that you all have, like some of your greatest needs that maybe a Hoosier is out there right now watching this and this is really pulling up their heartstrings and they yeah. want to get involved. What do you need? Yeah, 2020 was tough. It was tough for all of us yeah. and Genesaret pivoted to continue to deliver healthcare services, high quality, free healthcare services to the patients that are in need. Um, we launched a telehealth program and we continue to deliver medical care to um, folks that had no other place to get it. Um, one of the last things that we needed to get open back up before mm -hmm. COVID was a mobile medical unit. Oh, okay. So we have this massive RV that we take out onto the streets and we take the care directly to the people. And you know what we found is that um, as we started taking the mobile unit out, we had a, some help this past summer. We had a really smart intern that helped us relaunch the mobile medical clinic. Okay. And we found that we had a lot of people coming up to us on the street seeking care. Wow. So we actually had a very generous donation from IU Health. And um, what we've done is we are taking the mobile unit out. So I hired a driver. We started yesterday. That's great. Um, but what I need is I need some help with financing this thing. Yeah. So we need to be able to pay for this unit to be out on the streets every day of the week. Awesome. The need is there. 
um, you know, we have people walk up to us that have a blood sugar of 500. Do you mm -hmm. know what that means? That's uh, a really uh, high yeah. number. That that's is a, a bad very thing, high. That right? sounds very high. And I want to be out on the street. I want to be in the same spot each week where people know where I'm going to be, mm -hmm. so they can come up and they can get my free medical care. It's no barrier. You don't have to have insurance. You don't have to pay anything. You just have to come up and, and tell us you Gosh, need some help. What an important mission and service that you all are providing to really some of the most vulnerable people in our population. You know, sometimes when we think, especially around the holidays, it's time to volunteer. But really, you can get involved year-round with GFC, especially maybe if you're a retired medical worker, a health care provider, and you're, uh, you're wanting to get involved. Uh, really an awesome organization and work that you're doing, Teresa. So our volunteers are the lifeblood of our organization. Um, our volunteer medical clinics are staffed by volunteer doctors, nurse practitioners, pharmacists, nurses, and then a whole host of non-medical folks. Yeah. So if you've got the time, we need the help. Um, we'd love to have you out on our mobile unit with us. We're going to be out every day of the week. We've got mobile clinic or we've got stationary clinics almost every day of the week as well. But we need help. So we need you to come and, and help staff, help deliver high quality, respectful, dignified care to whoever needs it. Teresa, thank you so much for being on the show and for the important work that you're doing for Hoosiers in thank our city. Thank you so much for having us. You're welcome.